Hello, you guys. How are you? It's been so long since I've seen you. <laughs> um, today I have a very quick video to show you to do as a warm up if you want to understand your bow a little bit better and get around the the fingerboard with the left hand a little bit more um, consistently, right? Because it's it's um, sometimes you find yourself practicing and practicing, and then the next day you wake up and you're like, why can't I do any of it ever again? <laughs> technique that's strong that allows you to just kind of practice and then repeat it again and again and again without like just maybe having it happen if that makes any sense so this is this is not going to solve all of your problems <laughs> but it's going to um, give you some food for thought we're going to talk about the right hand first so I hope my lighting is okay I'm really you know I'm technologically challenged so we're going to divide the bow in three parts we're gonna be starting at the extreme frog. So, and this is something that I've been working on with my students this week a lot. So, um, and I found that it's, you know, it's kind of been helpful. So we're gonna start at the very extreme frog. This is a part of the bow that most people shy away from if you're a beginner, you know, because it's just awkward to play there, especially if you are playing like this, right? If you're playing like this, your arm's gonna bash into the instrument there and um, it's just awkward to get the arm all the way up there. So first things first, make sure that you are dropping your bow on the string. Your hair is flat. You see how my hair is flat? It's not like this. I'm dropping it just like this. And it's just like I would have my arm, you know, right there in front of me. I always kind of say, put your wrist in front of your nose or slightly to the side of your nose, like 45 out from your nose. You know, if your nose is zero, 45 is kind of over there. So, um, anyway, <laughs> you wanna keep your wrist curved. And then you just add the bow, plop, put it on the A string. You can put it on the E string or if you're on the viola, the A string. It's just, this is a really sharp angle, so this is really hard to come, this is already just harder. So find a comfortable string to do this on, maybe your middle two strings or something. We're gonna do three rhythms. You're gonna do um, quarter notes, eighth notes, and 16th notes. So when you're in this part of the bow, the arm that the part of the arm that's going to be moving is your upper arm, your shoulder, right? Your elbow. If I just open my elbow, that happens, right? So it's not my elbow that does this. It's actually my shoulder, and everything else is just along for the ride. So we're going to do four quarter notes, and then eight eighth notes, and then I can't do the math. Oh my god, that's so sad. Is that like sixteen? Yeah, 16 16th notes, wow. <laughs> I don't even know if that's right. That is so sad. Okay, so anyway, ready and... And when you're doing that, you're allowing the whole weight of your arm to just kind of hang there. So try not to like, because it's just, it's awkward to play there. So just let everything hang out there. Once you've done that, you can do that a bunch of times. Do it in front of a mirror so you can see how you're moving. Same thing in the middle of the bow. See if you can get the same kind of sound that you're getting here, right here. And make sure your bow is straight. So. And then same thing at the frog, not the frog, the tip. So the tip, you might, you know, find that it sounds like this. Because it's the lightest part of the bow. But let's see if we can just really sustain that weight. So let your arm hang at the tip. And when you're moving your arm at the very tip, it's from the elbow. You see that? So this is just hanging out at this angle at this level, and then you open. And you see how my hand, my hand likes to do this, it likes to creep up, but let's try and keep it lower down. But there's not like a crazy, you know, thing in my wrist happening either. If you have that, make sure that your instrument's actually up, you know, and um, you can experiment with how you're standing, how you're holding 
your instrument. Because if you have a really big crook in your wrist, that's not right either. So you have to play around with that. So that's the first part of the warm up. Once you've got that, then we're going to divide the bow. We're not even going to divide the bow. We're going to just do a whole bow and see if we can sustain the sound. So you can do it with a metronome. I don't have my metronome handy, actually. I keep looking at my stand. It's not there. <laughs> so. And your job really is to use every ounce of the bow that you can and see if you can comfortably do that. I'm saying comfortably because um, I know that it's it's just a little bit harder in those areas, so see if you can just get it. Keep the sound really sustained. After that, you can do some string crossings. So you can do the string crossings in those three parts of the bow. So you could try it at the frog and just do consecutive strings. When you're, when you're right here at the bow, remember, the part of the body that's moving is your shoulder. So your shoulder has to move the entire thing. You can't just do Right, you see how that's just from my fingers? <laughs> Bring the whole arm with you. And it'll be really nice and clean. When you're in the middle of the bow, same thing. Bring your whole arm with you. And at the tip. The distance that you have to travel out here is a lot further. You know, like a lot more work. But when you're playing music, having that understanding of how your arm has to move in those various areas, how to move, and kind of training your body to just move that way rather than doing something like weird, like, you know, <laughs> that doesn't make um, your sound sound good or give you clarity, um, train your body to kind of do that. So that, that's what these warm ups are doing. They're just trying, they're just there to help you think about how you're getting around your instrument. So, um, for the left hand, I said this would be a quick video, <laughs> but we'll see. So for the left hand, what happens um, is your intonation, whenever you have a string crossing or a shift or anything, is going to probably suffer unless you know exactly how you're going to get to wh whatever place you're getting. So when you transition across the strings anywhere, make sure that you bring your whole arm with you, right? So let's say I stay on my bottom string and then I just leave my arm there and then I'm on this top string now. Well, everything's really crunched on this string because I'm at the wrong level for my arm. So when I cross, my arm comes along with me. If I go from this string to this string, you see that rotation? And you see my thumb and first finger? So it's rotating. It's not doing this. I'm not, because that's just a disaster. <laughs> so. Keep everything rotating like this. You have your two points here, and they need to have a little flexibility. So for this exercise, what you can do, you're listening for do, re on every string, because it's a whole step. tuner to see if you're actually staying consistently in tune because if you're if you're in tune on one string and then you correctly transfer to the next string it should be perfectly in tune as well if you change something then the intonation will change does that make sense so if you've got that then add your second finger and you can do this in any hand pattern but I would just suggest doing it in this one because it's just the easiest one so the next one we have is a major third you're gonna put your first finger along with it because we just got first finger, that's in tune across all of them. So now if I just put second finger a whole step up, that should be in tune as well. And we're gonna listen for that. We're gonna listen for Vivaldi. tune and that's because it has to sit right there it can't sit like this <laughs> it can't sit like this it has to sit like this so you might experiment so I'm getting my foundation 
foundation there and then putting this on top. Once you have that, then you can experiment with putting all of them down at the same time. And it's important to be able to do that because when you go fast, if, if you have your fingers there, then all you have to do is put them up. You don't have to put them down and then pick them up. So let's try this one. We're gonna listen for Here Comes the Bride. Right? So if I do, all of a sudden it's out of tune. squeezing the living daylights out of the neck. I'm not contorting it in any way, just rotating across. You can do the same thing with your fourth finger. This one's a little harder, right? You could get your two, three, and then four. It's really not about going fast. It's about accurately, consistently, repeatedly, doing something correctly <laughs> and uh, because you know otherwise what's the point of practicing you know you're just gonna have to redo everything again the next day so you really want to know how you're getting around your fingerboard and you can do this in any position or in any hand pattern I'm just showing it to you in first position because if you can't do it in first position then good luck doing it in any position <laughs> any other position so just to, just to kind of recap everything, the first thing you're gonna do with the bowing uh, warm-up, you're gonna divide your bow in three parts. One, two, three, just using a tiny amount of bow so that you can understand how your arm works in those various parts of the bow. You want it to sound the same in all of those places. So you don't want this to be the lightest and this to be the heaviest, you want them all to be the same. Then you're gonna put everything together and use every ounce of bow. You can use a metronome to keep your speed consistent, maybe four beats per bow. Try it with six, try it with eight. The more you know, variation you can of control you have over this, what am I saying? The more speeds you have control over, the better control you have over your bow. Try to keep the bow on one point and don't let it move around all over the place and watch your posture. I'd really suggest doing this in front of a mirror. And then um, once you've got that on one string, then you can go between two strings. And as you know, whenever you have a string crossing, that's where things kind of sometimes can falter. So how are you getting across the string? So divide your bow again in thirds, figure out how your body has to move so that you are transitioning across the string correctly, right? So that you can repeatedly, repeatedly get a nice sound every time instead of Right, we don't want that. That just happened because I didn't bring the whole arm weight along with me. Right, and my bow maybe wasn't straight as well for the other one. So things like that. Um, and then for the left hand, this is about getting across the strings uh, correctly so that you're not really changing anything. So that if you play first finger on this string, then you have to go all the way over here. How do you get from here to here correctly so that you're not changing the pitch? Because if it's in tune here and you, and you transfer over here, if you did it right, it should be perfectly in tune still. If you do this, <laughs> it's not. So it's just about how to get around. So you're building your fingers on top of each other and it's a slow practice, okay? So hopefully that was helpful. <laughs> um, any of you beauty lovers out there, if you are interested in what lipstick I'm wearing, it's not really lipstick, it's from Lush, and it's called Passionate, and I love Lush. It's like my favorite place in the world. So this is called Passionate, it's like a little lip paint. You can use it on your cheeks, you can use it on your eye lids, <laughs> whatever. But okay, I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you guys very soon, and thank you so much for all your lovely comments, and. Uh, just enjoying my last bizarre video that was like a day in my life video and it was just fun to film so thank you